All right, welcome to the Panda Props and Costumes channel. And today we're going to be assembling a thermal detonator, um, which is the plastic uh, costume part that goes on the back of the Stormtrooper's belt. So um, before we start, make sure you got all your safety stuff, right? Your safety glasses, gloves if you need them, and uh, a mask if you need to paint anything, which we will be doing. So. Uh, it's always better if you can use a respirator, right? These are always the better way to go. Uh, you can use a paper or filter mask, but remember this is just for particles, not for fumes. So it's best to invest in one of these if you're going to be doing lots of uh, costume or prop work or any kind of build stuff, it's just a little bit safer. Okay, so first make sure you got all your pieces. Um, you've got your ABS or PVC pipe. On the original costumes, uh, the pipe was about, I, I don't remember the exact metric measurement, but um, you know, it was sort of between two and a quarter to two and a half inches or so. Um, if you're in North America, that's a really odd pipe size to find. So um, I use two inch uh, ABS pipe. Um, the original pipe was came in like a gray PVC, but uh, we don't have that in North America. So this is uh, what we're going to use, which is two inches. So it's still within spec for uh, most Stormtrooper uh, costumes from the 501st Legion. Um, the outer diameter of this tube is about two and three eighths of an inch. Um, and so that's kind of as close as we can get, right? Um, your Stormtrooper kit should come with uh, some plastic parts. So this is the control panel, which is gonna go here. And it's gonna come with a couple of end caps. And uh, if it doesn't, uh, or your kit might come with thermal detonator clips. Um, if they don't, you can usually get them online or through uh, some different suppliers. Um, if you're looking for some of these or any of these supplies, um, I will have some listings on my Etsy shop as well too because I sort of make some of these in my spare time. Um, since the pipe is not in the appropriate gray color, we're going to be painting it. So we're going to be using uh, some Duplicolor primer and some Krylon uh, smoke gray, which is an appropriate, uh, you know, close to matching color for what the original uh, uh, should be. But um, Let's get started. What we're going to do is, oh, sorry, and we're also going to need some black screws. So um, on the originals to mount these um, thermal detonator clips, there were black uh, sort of dome headed slotted screws. Um, and surprisingly, that's sometimes hard to find. So I found these round head uh, slotted screws. They just came in silver, but all I did was I scuffed them up on a little sanding pad and then painted them black, sort of satin black, and that'll totally get you approved for your um, Stormtrooper costume. A um, Couple other things we're gonna need, we're gonna need some glue. Um, you can either use um, uh, CA glue, right? So um, super glue basically, or you can use uh, ABS or styrene glue, or uh, in this case, for some of the pieces, I'm gonna be using this, um, uh, it's basically a version of weld on, uh, weld on cement, and you can squeeze it out so there's a little bit more control. You can also use E6000 if you want, basically anything to kind of get the stuff glued together. So the first thing we're gonna do is prep the ABS pipe. So if you haven't already, uh, clean some of these edges off, make sure that they're square, right? So it's just make things line up a little bit better. This particular pipe has already been pre-cut to about seven and an eighth inches. Um, the maximum length for a thermal detonator uh, you want is about um, seven and a half inches, okay? So seven and a quarter to seven and a half inches. So an easy way to take off some of this gnarly stuff is you can use a um, hobby knife or a blade just to clean out those inside edges, but you wanna make sure that these outside edges are um, nice and smooth or round, because otherwise you're gonna have an issue getting these caps on if there's a whole bunch of junk on the outside, so make sure that's smoothed out. After you've done that and you've gotten all your ends nice and clean, um, I just use a Scotch-Brite pad to scuff up the outside, okay? And uh, if you watch some of my other painting tutorials, this is just to give the outer surface uh, a bit of tooth for the paint to stick to. It also makes sure that, you know, if you've got any scratches or anything like that, when, when the pipe was either manufactured or transported, you're just scuffing those out and smoothing the whole thing out so that it can uh, look good when you paint it. Um, you also want to be careful. Sometimes these letters uh, that are, I'm not sure how they're put on there, or they're like 
you know, stamped in or lasered in or something. I usually try to sand those out because sometimes they'll actually show through the paint. So make sure you get those pretty good. So once you've uh, sanded it all, clean it off, um, you know, wash it if you need to, wash it with a bit of dish detergent and uh, water, rinse it off dry, and then it's good to go for paint. So um, we're gonna get ready for painting after we've done all this prep work to the pipe. All right, so while you're at it, you wanna make sure that your uh, vacuform pieces are the right size. So uh, based on some measurements I got from White Armor, the TD control pad or control panel should be about 122 millimeters wide okay um, and you want to make sure that you square off these edges right so make sure that they're you know fairly parallel to each other and you know square off these ends as well too so if you got a belt sander great if you don't just use sandpaper or trimming scissors or a file or whatever to get this stuff nice and clean and square another thing that I'll tend to do is while I've got it and I'm working on it is I will scuff up these inside surfaces because that's where we're going to be um, gluing it to our um, ABS pipe. So make sure you do that. Um, in terms of these end caps, um, make sure that they're the right width. So they should be about 20 millimeters, okay? About 20 millimeters deep. Um, and another trick that you can do, just like the other uh, I, I showed you with the, the PVC pipe, this one here is like sort of been freshly cut. You can see there's a lot of gnarly stuff in there run that craft knife along the inside. So that takes off all that, you know, sort of sanding debris that's gone on there. But also what it does is it kind of tapers that edge and it makes it a lot easier to install uh, when you actually need to install it on your uh, ABS pipe. So uh, also take a bit of sandpaper, run that around the outside edge just to take off any uh, flash any sort of like grinding or sanding material that might have been on there and do the inside as well too because we're going to be gluing these on permanently okay there you go okay so now that we got our pipe all sanded and prepped we are going to mask off some of the areas so the reason i do this is uh, or why i'm doing this is I basically try and mask off the last uh, three eighths of an inch or so. And the main reason is that when you paint it, um, you're gonna be increasing the diameter of the pipe and it's gonna make it even harder to put the, uh, the end caps on. So I usually just throw a little bit of masking tape, doesn't really matter what kind. Um, you're just trying to prevent the paint buildup from increasing on there. Um, it also ensures that when you're gluing pieces on that it's being glued plastic to plastic. I don't like to glue plastic things onto surfaces that are painted because then you're relying on the strength of the paint to hold that piece on, okay? So it's always better to um, glue directly to the plastic if you can. So I'm just rolling out another piece here for the other end. Again, just about three quarters of an inch or, or sorry, three eighths of an inch. Um, of the end of the pipe is good enough. Okay, good to go. And the other thing that we're gonna do actually is we are going to, um, I'm gonna mask off the section where the control panel goes because same thing, I wanna make sure that when I glue this on, it's being glued directly to the plastic pipe and not to a painted surface, okay? So um, this is pretty straightforward. Just take a ruler and make sure that you center your control pad um, on on the uh, pipe so it's about one and an eighth on this side a little more than one and an eighth so actually it's pretty darn close okay and then what I'll do is I will take I'll take a pencil take a pencil and basically trace out the outline of the control pad where you want it to go and then I'm gonna do one more trick here okay so what we're going to do is we're going to put masking tape on the inside of this um, rectangle and it's going to be just slightly in. We don't want to mask right to the edge because if we glue on the control pad a little bit crooked, you might see it's going to be painted gray everywhere, but then you might reveal a little bit of the black. So you actually want to um, mask about an eighth of an inch inside. So all this area here is going to get masked. Okay. But before we do that, we're going to drill a hole and you're probably going to wonder, well, why the heck are you drilling a hole? in your pipe. Um, the main, the reason is that when you glue this cap on, 
and then you glue the second cap on, you're gonna have a hard time getting it on because all the air pressure is trapped inside, okay? So if you drill a little hole, it's like a little relief for the cap to go on and you're gonna have a much easier time getting it on. So um, that's why that little hole is there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use uh, some wider tape for the control panel part, just to so we're not wasting all of our nice fancy yellow tape. Probably only takes about two pieces to uh, get it masked off. So same here, I can see I can see the pencil line, and I'm just gonna put the tape about an eighth of an inch inside of that. Okay, there we go. So now that that's there, what we do is we're gonna take our hobby knife and we're gonna score the tape um, around like this. So I'm just cutting through the tape. I'm not, not gonna worry about scratching the pipe because um, the control panel is gonna cover that, right? So all we're doing is just doing a little score line about an eighth of an inch inside where that pencil mark is, right? See that there? Okay, so now that's all masked off. We're going to go and we're going to prime the outside with some Duplicolor gray primer and then we are going to top coat it with Krylon smoke gray and uh, that's going to simulate the color of the original uh, PVC pipe. Okay, here we are. We're back. We've got our painted pipe so you can see I peeled all the tape off and we're revealed that there's this plastic here and plastic here so they have really good contact surface for our pieces to glue into. So now we're gonna glue our end caps on. Um, and, and as I mentioned earlier, you can use almost any kind of glue uh, to glue the caps on securely. Uh, I'm gonna be using this um, Weldon number six, which is an ABS solvent glue. Um, and it just gives me a little bit more uh, work time than some other glues. Um, if this doesn't start coming out, I might have to poke a hole in the end. So I'm just going to run a little bead inside this uh, cap. You don't need a lot. You're just trying to make sure that the cap is secure when you uh, install it. Okay. So I make sure to keep my glue facing up so that I don't drip all over the place. Just put that there for a sec. And um, I find the easiest way to do this is to line it up and then put it on the table and then push it down and kind of rock it back and forth. And that kind of ensures that the cap is seated or the pipe is seated all the way down into the cap. All right, there we go. So that's the first one. You wanna make sure that the cap is as square as you can get it to the end of the pipe. All right, so ideally the pipe is already cut square, but um, if, hopefully if it's not, you need to like sand that a little bit. But uh, you know, when you're putting the cap on, make sure it doesn't the glue doesn't dry with it sitting crooked. So we're gonna do the second one. All right, so now both caps are glued on there. Now we want to install the control panel, which is over here. And make sure that when you're installing this, it's not so important right now, but um, when you install your clips, you want to position it in such a way that the button is facing up on the back of your belt, so it's being installed like that. It is not supposed to go on like that, so don't put it on backwards, obviously, right? Um, so you want to make sure that your control panel is facing the right way. So before we do that, uh, put our clips on, we're going to make sure that the control pad um, is centered over the spot that we uh, masked off earlier. So um, I just try to center it over the that space and then try to make this, these spaces even as well too. Um, in a perfect world, you'd have like a little gap of about 15 millimeters or so um, on either side of that control pad. And it's, you know, it's pretty close. I think I'm at like 13 millimeters. I mean, no one's going to measure it that closely or look at it that closely, but you want to make sure you're kind of within spec, right? So now that that's on there, um, a trick to making sure that it stays in the same place when you're gluing it is to 
put a piece of tape on. And this just ensures that the pad's not gonna like slide around while you're gluing it. I've had that happen before and just kind of completely screwed up, you know, a thermal detonator just because the, the pad went on crooked and then you have to peel it off and it's just a big pain in the butt. So this is a lot easier. Just put a piece of masking tape. Once you've got it centered and that's where you want it, now it's gonna hinge, okay? And then you can put your glue on the inside. And again, that hole was super helpful to let the air out while I push the caps on. So now we want to spread our glue on. Um, you want to make sure that it's not um, super close to the edge of your control pad. If you put it too close, it is going to ooze out, okay? So you don't want to actually get it too close. So I'm, I'm just putting down a small bead about a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the um, piece of plastic. So I just put my cap back on so it doesn't dry out. This stuff dries really quick. It sort of skins over the top of that nozzle and sometimes I have to go and poke a hole in it to let it back out. <sighs> making sure my piece is clean, making sure the tape is on. And then all I'm gonna do is slide it back on and then put some pressure on it and hold it for about, I don't know, 15 seconds or so. Um, if it's CA glue, um, it's gonna set pretty quick too, but uh, this stuff sets pretty good. Again, you can use, you know, CA glue, super glue, E6000, this sort of weld on cement. Um, I actually wouldn't suggest using a really runny um, solvent um, like um, uh, styrene or, or, or plastic weld, that kind of thing, because it can ooze all over your, your paint job and then that's going to kind of screw it up and you're not going to be happy about that. Okay. So once that's on there pretty good, um, this stuff dries or sort of bonds pretty quickly. Only takes about 15 or 20 seconds or so for it to actually grab on and it's pretty good. So I can I can kind of hear it, you know, when you squeeze it, you can kind of hear like the glue sort of smushing out. So it kind of gives you an indication of if it's cured or not. And um, I think this is pretty good to handle. So um, ideally you would have thermal detonator clips that came with your um, thermal detonator. If you don't, you can get them online or you can go through vendors on White Armor. Um, I sell these as well too on my Etsy shop. So there's a link in the show notes if you do want to get some. You can get them with a straight back or you can get them with a bent back. Okay. So some people like the bent back because when you hook it over um, a belt or something like that, it kind of kind of stays on there a little better, sort of prevents it from coming off. Some people like the straight version for easier on and off. It's totally up to you, right? So for this particular build, I'm gonna be doing it with um, these bent clips. So you wanna make sure that you install the bent clip on the bottom edge of the thermal detonator, not the side. You don't wanna go like that because that's the top. You wanna put it this way, okay? And uh, per kind of the originals, the clips were pretty much touching or almost touching the uh, end cap and the um, control panel. So I just put them on like that. And before I put the screws in, I will drill a couple of small pilot holes. Like so. And um, sorry about the mess here. Things kind of go a little crazy when I'm starting to work. Um, and then you just screw it in with your flathead slotted screws like so. And if you painted screws, make sure you're applying good pressure on the screws so that you don't scratch them up because you, uh, you want them to stay black. Um, you know, especially if you're going for like a Centurion build or level three or whatever, something like that, that's a little bit more higher detail. You want to make sure that uh, you're using the right screws, right? And it's, if you don't have the right ones, you're trying to do a costume approval, you might not get approved. So uh, looking for my other clip here, put this one on this side. And again, should be pretty much touching the control panel and the end cap. So I'm just gonna fire a couple holes here. Let's get that out of the way. And it's a pretty quick build, it doesn't take a ton of time to put this guy together. Last screw. Here we 
All right. And there we go. That's it. That is your finished thermal detonator ready to hang on your belt. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. But uh, this is a pretty straightforward build. Uh, good luck with the rest of your costume build. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks very much.